Hello and welcome to today's show. Today we're going to look at AR-15 ejection port enlargement. The purpose of this video is entertainment. It is not intended to instruct. There is no warranty either written or reply and none shall be inferred. Well, let me go ahead and put this here. It may be what you're looking for, what you came to watch the video for. I'm going to put this down. When I started to build this particular project, I went to look to see if I could find the dimensions of the port for a 458 SOCOM or similar 450 Bushmaster, that type of thing. I went looking for uppers and I found them more expensive what I really thought they need to be considering there's just a little bit of modification in the port. So I looked for the dimensions and I found a similar upper that wasn't the mill spec type that gave port dimensions and that didn't look like it was going to work and I didn't really want to grind off my upper edge here. There is a divot right there for the dust, uh, dust cover. They want to lose that functionality, so I looked around and I saw some pictures of, and they take a little bit off in this area. They kind of square up those corners, and they take this edge down. And I figured, well, I could probably do that. I just don't know what size I really need to do it to. So what I did was I having uh, some ammunition, some some rounds to see what would fit through the hole, and I opened them up to. Uh, 610 in this area is what it currently measures out to be on this one and 595 on this side on the where it's a little thicker still on the side unmodified I could have ramped that down as well but the the shell is going to eject from this side so I went ahead and gave it a try and the reason why I didn't publish this video is because after cutting it this way I don't know what's official and what's not but I know this one actually works. I went ahead and assembled uh, the upper, put a round to it. It ejects just fine. Now, one of the things I was concerned with, and we'll set this aside, was if you look at the bolt carrier, I have to make sure that these are the uh, rails that it runs on here and here and here and here, and of course, on the opposite side. So when the bolt carrier is in here, I know I cannot take this edge so far down that I don't have the surface for this lower rail to run on. Okay, so that was a concern. And I did a little bit at a time. How I cut was I used a Dremel tool, the flat disc type like this, and I laid a little scotch electric tape, this is probably 33 plus, maybe this is the 88, and then laying it right across, getting it what looked like eyeball flat, came in here and simply went back and forth, and it actually allowed me to get into those corners, kind of round that out fairly well, and I like that. Now on the upper, I couldn't quite get that in there and still kind of take some off this side, so I ended up using a little grinder like this if I haven't forgotten and just went in there and kind of smoothed it out. Now it was a little bit rougher than I wanted to with with a grinder type thing so I took a buffer wheel like this and with buffing compound polished the aluminum down to make a fairly smooth surface right here. I've got a little bit uneven because I was using um, a grinder versus the flat wheel. I found the flat wheel actually did a really nice job going back and forth. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull my little thing out there, slide my bolt carrier group in. Now move my numbers out of the way and if I turn this, let's see if I can get that that way. Can you see, let me get my little pointer, we have enough surface for that rail to run on. When I turn it over on this side, see, 
that's as far down as I can go without exposing that running rail. So uh, I think that's important not to go any further down than that. We'll take that bolt out. Now I want you to compare this against another uh, finished upper. Let me set that one flat. Get an idea for how this was actually opened up. Let me get a pin so that I can place, kind of keep them about at the uh, same basic level. And if I take my dust cover, it's got no spring, obviously. But as I see, I'm actually, I don't know if it shows up on camera until I actually produce this, but I actually have left enough of this right here so that there is not an edge. It's not going to hit this on the way out. It's not going to hit the pin or the dust cover on the way out unless possibly it hits here and bounces down. But it's a straight shot out. And I can also, should be able to put, I realize the, the angle of the extractor. Let me put this, slide this in here. See, it's going to try to go pretty well much centered in there. It's, it's better centered than I would have thought it would have been. But what I still can do with, in this configuration is snap that down. And I have a nice kind of little seal here. I didn't want to take this all the way back to this edge. And I didn't. It cycles and it seems to run just fine. So uh, I'm going to take these numbers one more time. Lay them right there, I don't know if they're the official, what you need to do this to or not, but it worked for me. I do point out that it's 610 on this side is kind of what it finished out at, 595 on that side. These corners I tried to square up. The rest of them I left those radiuses natural. This, of course, is an exaggeration. 